Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with Tavern Master. This is a medieval tavern management game where you are in charge of building, maintaining and running your very own cozy tavern. Buy tables and benches, fill barrels with drinks, hire staff and serve your first customers. You will have to make sure your employees are happy, there are enough drinks and seats for guests and soon you will be able to expand your business in various ways. For example, you can hire musicians to attract more people to your tavern and make customers have more patience while waiting for a drink. Honestly, I never thought about that. Basically, if you want to get your drinks faster, avoid live music. Anyway, here you can also hold special events to attract special customers who have very specific food and drink requirements. They will come in the morning and stay all day. And they could stay all night as well if you create rooms with beds in your tavern. Every room will be rated with stars from 1 to 5, which will determine how much money you can earn from the guests. So my advice is to keep them cockroaches free and with complimentary potato salad snacks. Tripang 2 he will take on the shoes of an escaped soldier who has no memories of his past life but is infused with supernatural abilities. All you want is revenge for, for something, you know, and you'll stop at nothing. You will deliver devastating punches, sneak around in the shadows, wield powerful weapons and give the bad guys a taste of their own medicine. Or a taste of pineapple in the potato salad, which is way worse and should be banned by Convention of Geneva or something. So anyway, as you can already tell, the game has strong horror vibes and has visuals and atmosphere similar to legendary fear games. Here you'll find 6 difficulty levels, so even if it looks hard to crack, on easy it is quite easy. Game has above 90% of positive reviews on Steam and you can play the free demo version as well. Stasis Bone Totem Perhaps I should start with the fact that the game has an overwhelmingly positive review score on Steam. That is always a great sign. He will take control of Mac and Charlie, a husband and wife duo who make their living by searching the ocean for salvage. But when you stumble upon an abandoned oil rig in the Pacific Ocean, you uncover a horrific secret. And the evil corporation behind it will do anything to keep it hidden. As you embark on your adventure, you will encounter an immersive narrative filled with spine-tingling horror and an expected twist. Stasis Bone Totem, despite being a psychological horror game, is kinda relaxing because of the point-and-click nature and an interesting puzzles to solve. Pacific Drive this is a very interesting title with mechanics you won't usually see in other games. In this driving survival adventure you face supernatural dangers on each expedition into the exclusion zone. Make your base of operations in an abandoned garage, where you'll research new parts, customize your station wagon and chart routes deeper into the zone. As you gather precious resources and investigate what's been left behind in the zone, you learn exactly what it takes to survive in this unpredictable hostile environment. All the vibes here lead to Strugatsky brothers and their roadside picnic story. Many games draw inspiration from it, from legendary Stalker to a recent gem, Tunguska the Visitation. And if you like the theme about some stranger things happening in this specific area, I recommend you to watch the movie named Annihilation with Natalie Portman. You won't be disappointed, I promise. SteamWorld Dig 2 Game takes you on a mining adventure forged in Metroidvania flames. When an old trading town is struck by mysterious earthquakes, it's up to you, a lone steambot, along with your unlikely companion to uncover what trembling terrors lies beneath. And you know what you will uncover deep, deep below? Your fat mama snoring. Oh, come on, no, it's a secret and you will have to discover it by yourself. So you will dig your way underground and explore vivid worlds riddled with treasure, secrets and deadly traps. Find dangerous enemies at every turn of the the underworld, including shadowy creatures and the haunted remains of an ancient electrical threat. Well, this game is obviously story rich, and that is awesome. Turbo Overkill the game's motto is Half Metal, Half Human, All Murder Machine. Title is heavily inspired by some of the all-time greats like Doom and Quake and Duke Nukem 3D with awesome cyberpunk visuals. You play as Johnny Turbo, augmented with hidden arm rockets and a chainsaw that extends from your lower leg, allowing you to slide slice enemies wide open. If that sounds amazing, believe me, plays even better. As people say, the game is set in something between Blade Runner and Doom. Your enemy here is Rogue AI and its army of augmented minions. And the coolest thing is that you just need money, probably for buying better ingredients for your potato salad. And because of that you take on the impossible job of destroying the greatest AI ever created and take the bounty. Sounds easy. Cloudpunk 
Here you will play as a person named Rania. This is your first night working for Cloudpunk, a semi-legal delivery company based in the sprawling city of Nivalis. You go everywhere, from the marrow below to the spires that pierce the grey clouds high above. No delivery job is too dangerous and no one is faster than a Cloudpunk driver. You never ask what's in the package you are delivering, but you know, one day everything went south and suddenly you will have to unravel mysteries in a world of corporate conspiracy, hackers and rogue AI. Great original game. Tyranny. In a realm where the tyrant has already won, you must decide how to reshape the world. Will you become an all-powerful dictator or will you strengthen the pillars of a new regime? You are not a random villager here, in fact you will wield a vast amount of power in the occupied lands. So basically you are some kind of a little finger. So in tyranny your actions really matter and no decision here is truly black or white. Or Asian. The choices here are morally obscure and will never let you out of the situation easily. People on Steam really love that this game is very detailed and the world itself feels alive and immersive. The combat might be challenging, but it is fair, since it rewards the players who take the time to strategize. Just be warned that irony is more like a book. Be ready for the walls of text everywhere you go. Singularity here you'll be a witness of so-called singularity event that fractured time and threatened the world as we know it. Some say it was the day when everyone forgot the potato salad recipe. That bent time and space, a real apocalypse happened. So here armed with powerful advanced weaponry and the experimental time manipulation device, you'll fight enemies from the past, the present and the abominations caught in somewhere in between. With the help of this magical device, you will age enemies to dust in seconds, manipulate objects outside the laws of gravity and degrade things or renew them to their pristine form. You will be a real time bender here. I control time and space. Yeah, like that. Third Age of Wonders game. This franchise, along with the Heroes of Might and Magic, is one of the most beloved among turn-based strategy fans. Here you can choose one out of six classes and try to conquer and enslave the other five. That won't be easy. Except if you play on easy, then it will be easy. Here you'll find many unique and well-known skills and monsters, multiplayer mode, many races to choose your allies from, also level editing tools and countless unique scenarios you will make by yourself using random map generator. Although I must say that Age of Wonders is fun to play, but it doesn't feel very balanced. The game emphasizes warfare and exploration, but doesn't give you enough resources to actually do these things without waiting forever. You know that feeling in Heroes games where you just wanted to buy a black dragon, but you had no money, so you skipped several turns so you could finally afford it. But then Monday came, the population grew, and you felt short with your money again. Age of Wonders invokes the same feeling over and over again. Still, a wonderful game. Citizen Sleeper. This is a serious game for serious people and it has above 90% of positive reviews, meaning that this is a great game no matter how you look at it. Citizen Sleeper is a narrative RPG which takes you on Erlen's Eye, a ruined space station that is home to thousands of people trying to survive on the edges of an interstellar capitalist society. You are a sleeper, a digitized human consciousness in an artificial body owned by a corporation that wants you back. So literally, someone owns your ass and the rest of you, and amongst the unfamiliar and colorful inhabitants of the eye, you need to build friendships, earn your keep and navigate the factions of this strange metropolis if you hope to survive. Game is text-based, with multiple endings, beautiful drawings and sci-fi cyberpunk atmosphere. It's like a great book where you can actually tell the hero what he must do. Killer Frequency the year is 1987 and you will step into the shoes of a late-night radio talk show host, new in town and fallen from grace. The chief of police is dead, so the townsfolk turn to you for help, as apparently you are the only person in town who can run a phone line. The genre here is horror, but with dark humor elements. You will have to solve puzzles to save callers from being hunted down by a mysterious killer, or maybe there are more than one, you don't know. Every call you get here is life and death. And you with your wits and smarts will have to save the inhabitants of Gallows Creek. Well, at least you will try and probably fail. You know, the protagonist is as smart as you are. That's okay, you can try again. You will use branching dialogues to interact with a variety of eccentric small town personalities, including potential victims and suspects. Explore your surroundings, gather clues, make decisions, solve satisfying riddles and try to help each of your callers to survive the night. People who play the game are saying that the game is very addictive and fun. It has a very high review score and there are not a lot of games like that in general, so it's a really cool and original title. 
Thymesia. This is a dark fantasy action RPG with fast-paced combat and an interesting plague weapon system. In a kingdom where death rules, you will play as a mysterious character known by the codename Corvus. And as always, you are the kingdom's final hope, blah blah, the fate of the land is resting in your hands, and so on. You know, also it's a short game. It is possible to beat it in 6 hours, but hey, let's be fair and square and triangle. It ain't gonna happen unless you are a god of gamepad. Also, if you like tea with times, then you are strong and this game needs you. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy in this third-person action-adventure game you will play as Star-Lord, and thanks to your bold yet questionable leadership, you have persuaded an oddball crew of unlikely heroes to join you. Some jerk, surely not you, has set off a chain of catastrophic events, and only you can hold the unpredictable Guardians together long enough to fight off total interplanetary meltdown. For this you will have to use element blasters, tag team beatdowns, jet boot power dropkicks, even put pineapple into potato salad. Nothing is off-limits. Well, I'm kidding. The last thing surely is. That is a jail time guaranteed. And if you think it's all going to plan, you will be in for a world of surprises. With the consequences of your actions guaranteed to keep the Guardians on their toes. The game is one of the most beloved Marvel Universe games with positive reviews hovering way above 90%. Cat Quest 2 This is a 2D open world action RPG set in a fantasy realm of cats and dogs. Here the war continues. The mighty cats of Felingard are in eternal conflict with the dogs of the Lupus Empire. So Cat Quest 2 tells the story of two kings, brought together against their will on a journey of discovery to reclaim their thrones. Well, a king without a throne is like a biker without a bike, potato salad without potatoes, or you without… virginity. I'm kidding, don't be angry with me. Instead subscribe and I promise to never insult you ever again. Yeah, that is a lie. Anyway, in game you will find a bunch of explosive spells, expanded weapon options, exciting new character switch mechanic and local co-op. The best thing about this co-op is that you can actually play the game on a shared screen. So if you have a friend, you know what to do. I mean that you have a lot of knowledge about your friend, so blackmail him into playing this game with you. I tried to find some bad comments about the game, but after a minute of scrolling I found one negative comment comparing Cat Quest 2 to sub. Nautica 2. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. Cat Quest 2 is great. Try it, have fun. Blasphemous 2. Awakened in a strange new land and displaced from your final resting place, you trust back into the endless cycle of life, death and resurrection. There is no other option than to explore this perilous new world and uncover its long-forgotten secrets. There is nothing game-changing or very innovative in the second part of the Blasphemous, but you know the rule, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Your journey starts anew in a series of enchantingly grotesque landscapes, oozing gothic charm and littered with unforgiving traps. How you tackle the labyrinthian world remains at your discretion. There is no wrong turn to be made, only scores to settle. Taking down your enemies won't be easy, but the game is offering more chances to customize and improve your skill set, along with several new unique weapons to wield, so victory might just be within your grasp, but probably not. Neon Abyss here you will take control of one of the heroes traversing the dangerous underworld. You will be trying to find a way to remove the curse that made you immortal. If you get killed, you can go back to the day's end bar, where you prepare for the next playthrough. Over time you will unlock new rooms offering previously unavailable items and challenges. People on Steam are saying that this game is like Enter the Gungeon, but actually fun. They say that this is a very nice 2D roguelike with a huge amount of different weapons, perks and companions. By the way, these companions can be earned by finding eggs, which have a chance to hatch if you clear a room. Each of them has unique skills and can increase in power if you can manage to keep them alive long enough. But let us be fair, the only thing you can keep alive long enough is that cactus on your windowsill. Narita Boy this is a retro-futuristic game where you are Narita Boy, a legendary digital hero in an epic quest of simultaneous dimensions. The digital kingdom is under attack and you are the last hope of survival, so you will have to explore a vast world to find a Techno Sword, the only effective weapon against the enemy. That sounds nuts and also really cool. People on Steam are saying that Narita Boy has great music and huge variety of monsters and vehicles. You can even ride a floppy disk. How cool is that? Not as cool as riding your sister. Oh, come on. 
come on, don't say that. Although the least favorite part for almost everyone is platforming. Most of the players agree that dying by just jumping is way more common than dying from some monster, and that irritates a lot of people. Also, the story sounds cooler than it actually is. But in general, the game is a proud owner of a very positive review score, and that is always a good sign. Expeditions Viking. Game description says, A small band of Norse warriors lands on the shores of England. History may have forgotten their names, but their actions live on. Well, as I always say, the actions Vikings made in real life England involved a lot of pillaging and other crimes, like, you know, killing. So romantic and songs worthy. Anyway, he as the newly appointed chieftain of a modest Viking clan, you'll have a village of your very own. But to carve your name into the rune stones of history, you'll need great strength and great wealth to grow your village's prosperity. There is little left to be gained from the Norse lands, and so you must set your sights on the seas to the west, where tales speak of a great island filled with treasure and slaves ready for the taking. Game has a very positive review score on Steam, but there are also quite a few comments saying that the game is a bit too slow, you know, just like your sister. Titan Quest Anniversary Edition Initially the game was released in 2006, so it would be outdated by now, but thanks to this major overhaul, it is not. And it has more than 90% of positive reviews, so please, nail down your attention if you like games like Diablo. So if you ever played the old version, keep in mind that here you will get better resolutions, larger camera distance, multiplayer, mod support, Steam achievements, improved enemy and pet AI, countless bug fixes, dozens of new heroes, and so on. Titan Quest is a great game, one of the most beloved by the action RPG community, and I couldn't recommend it to you enough. It's literally like a potato itself in a potato salad. And people on Steam are saying that this is a masterful variation of Diablo formula and an absolute must-play if you like isometric hack-and-slash titles. The Witness I hate this game. The Witness is for smart people with great memory, and I'm none of these people. And although I like puzzles and all that, but by playing Witness I realize that I'm way dumber than I imagined. So if you like to test your memory and IQ, this is a great title for you. Just keep in mind that the results can be a bit disappointing. The game itself is set in a beautiful open world island where you have to crack all the riddles to unveil a terrible secret. If you are not some puzzle maniac, you will never get there. But at least the game will show you your limits. And I'll thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.